Well, we're back working on the snowcat, and today's project has got to do a little fabrication. So, two reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is since we made the cab a foot farther forward, and we're kind of shifting everything a little farther forward to get us a little more room inside the entire snowcat, uh, we've got two problems. Uh, one is the shifter is now kind of, it's going to be back behind your elbow for shifting. So that's not going to be very conducive. The other reason is you can see the doghouse now is about four inches taller. That gives our engine a little more breathing room, a little more space to work. So with that, we're going to need to bring that up and then we're going to bring it forward. So we're going to get it as far forward as possible so it's convenient for shifting, but yet it's out of the road so nobody's going to accidentally knock it into the wrong gear or anything like that. So uh, as you can see here, the old cable, uh, we needed to order a new cable anyways, so we might as well move the shifter where it's going to be convenient. So this old cable, it was an old Morse cable, uh, common on all snow cats. It's a push-pull cable, and this one's all cracked out. It's getting hard to shift, and it's pretty much not as flexible as it once was. So we're going to end up cutting our shifter off. We're going to move it up here. We're going to fab it in place. Um, we might actually go with a bolt-on option. If we can make it rigid enough, we're going to bolt it to the tub, and then we're going to bolt it to, to this radiator bracket here. That gives us a little bit of flexibility should we ever need to move anything or make any micro adjustments versus welding it. So uh, let's get at it. The next exciting thing is I got a package today from California that I've been waiting on. Well, I haven't been waiting on this package uh, only a week. It was awesome. These guys are fast. Uh, but what I have been waiting on is my shift cable. As uh, many of you know, this uh, old Morse shift cable uh, for the Snowcat uh, is shot. And it's too short. Uh, since we moved the control tower uh, like 16 inches ahead, uh, our shift cable is way too short. So uh, it's been a month and a half uh, that I ordered the original shift cable. And then uh, they only got it shipped. It got lost by FedEx. So thanks. And then uh, that one finally arrived. And then come to find out it's just not going to work. So I finally uh, ponied up and decided to call these guys. I've heard of them before. And they are Control Cables, Inc. And let's try and unbox this and see what it looks like. All right, before we get into unboxing our brand new control cable, uh, a little bit of the history. So I did some internet searches and I'd heard of these guys before. And uh, so I wanted to check them out. So uh, I went to their website, it's controlcables.com. And uh, they had this handy dandy cheat sheet on there for five, order, five steps to ordering a push-pull cable. So uh, they have all different types of construction. So they have a utility grade with stainless end rods, a marine utility grade with stainless end rods, stainless support tubes, stainless inner member, then they have a marine utility with stainless conduit fittings and rod support tubes, stainless inner member. Then they also have a low friction plastic weld one, uh, stainless rod ends and that uh, they can do that in any size except the HD ones. They also have another low friction plastic one with stainless. Then they also have a high temperature cable. So if you're running it uh, for around uh, exhaust or turbos or um, any high temp uh, areas you need that so um, and then they have a, you can do any cable in ultra light duty very light duty light duty medium duty and heavy duty so um, but don't let light duty fool you because technically this cable here and I don't know if you can see finger size uh, this is a light duty cable so I don't know what a heavy duty cable looks like uh, other than it's gonna be three-eighths um, on the end 
So that's, that's pretty massive because uh, my cable here, light duty is quarter inch. So uh, when you look at that three eighths, that's, uh, that's getting up there in size. So uh, with that, then they also do, you can do the threaded on both ends, which is what mine is. So you have the threaded bulkhead fittings on both sides. Uh, otherwise you can do the grooved uh, end fittings. So they have a clip on them that holds them in place. You'll see that on a lot of transmissions, uh, that style, or you can do threaded and grooved. So uh, any combination they're in. So, I mean, they just have this handy uh, guide to go through uh, and then you can measure off uh, your different thread lengths, your different uh, pitches and that, so that when you need to, uh, for your new cable, you just thread your current end off as long as you ordered the right cable, um, you'll be able to thread this right on your new, your new one. So uh, that was really nice uh, having that. So um, I like to know the people behind the business. So I put a phone call in and Ed answered the phone right away. And uh, I talked with him, he is super knowledgeable. I told him what I had and uh, told him what I thought I'd need, which is going to be a uh, just a regular utility grade with the stainless rod ends, um, the light duty version, and then the TT, so the threaded bulkheads on both sides. And uh, then it was a three inch stroke on it. That's what uh, it measures out as. And then I needed to upgrade it to 52 inches. And uh, he's like, by chance, are there any numbers on there? And I, after I got all the grime and the grease off, here it is here somewhere. Oh, let's see here. So dark here. There we go. It is a Morse 438-37 inch EG. So uh, as soon as I told Ed that, he said, yep, you got the right cable. He says, I know by the four code that it's this. I know by the eight code it's that. And I know by the three it's this. And uh, so it was unbelievable the knowledge he has of uh, these old style cables and was able to just recite that from memory. So uh, without further, uh, let's get into this. See how this new one checks out compared to the old one. The packaging. And here we go. Looks like a beautiful cable, heavy duty. Still flexible, a lot more flexible than this old cable, which is gonna help for routing, um, but yet still uh, stay decent there. So, get the zip tie off. They use high quality zip ties too. So looking at that, there we go. We have our new cable, the right length. Let's check the, oh, that's smooth. Smooth, just enough restriction on it so that it's not gonna wiggle out of place. In there, you can hear it. Gorgeous. If we measured our ends right, or this end here, we'll thread right on, giving us that perfect fit. So there we have it. Um, excited to get this put in so controlcables.com if you're ever in need of a custom push pull cable they do all kinds of different cables and that but can't recommend these guys enough so uh, let's put it in all right back at it working on the control cable we've got it all bolted in tightened down and test fitted got the transmission all topped off now that we got the hoses and the cooler on uh, with that, this is an FMX transmission, so it's got a little shorter throw than a C4 or C6. So with that custom control cable that we got from Custom Cables, uh, working that in. So Rowan here is pulling the guide off because we're going to cut a new guide uh, for the notches in the various positions for park, reverse, neutral, drive, one and two. So he's getting that done. Well, I'm going to start in on tightening the fittings up. Okay, here we go. We got uh, our control cable. Hopefully you can see this. Whoa, big finger. Uh, see that drive shaft spinning in there. So we're in park on the brake. There's reverse. You can see the drive shaft spinning. Then we go to neutral. 
good. And then to drive. Then we have a drive to go in the second, which you won't notice a difference, but it's already in there. And then when we go to first, you'll see it kick down a little bit, gear down a little bit. The foot brake stops our drive shaft. Bring her back up. Two, drive, neutral, reverse. And then if we step on the brake, stop the drag shaft, put it in park. And there we go, we got our full range of shift, so that's going to work great for us. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you would, subscribe, leave me a comment, and we'll see you next time.